Hello and welcome to Business Matters, a program on Blue Ridge PBS that strives to explore that subject from a variety of viewpoints and scenarios featuring interviews with the people helping to grow jobs, the economy, and the Blue Ridge region because business matters. Many have had a rough time over the past year trying to hold on to a job, often working from and perhaps helping to teach their kids at home. In the COVID era and outside of that, what special challenges might working women and working mothers face as they look to build a career or a business? My guests are Shannon Dominguez with the Advancement Foundation and co-founder of the Latinas Network. Abby Hamilton is president and CEO for United Way of Roanoke Valley. Kim Weider is a working mother and the CEO of her own company, not to mention on contract with a Canadian university. Freelance writing and working on a doctorate. Karen Pillis is with Family Service of Roanoke Valley. And Shana Ferguson is a mother and an insurance agent and a social worker at heart. Ladies, thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having us. Mm -hmm. uh, let's start out with uh, Kim, Shana, Shannon, whoever wants to start. For those of you with young children, uh, what's been the most difficult aspect of the past year as you, as you try to grow professionally? Productivity. <laughs> it's, been the, yeah. it's been my biggest challenge. Um, it's a juggling act. And I think being a working mother has always been a juggling act, but it's never been everything at 100% like it's been since the pandemic. And so it just feels like all of our fronts, like our work needs 100% of our time and our kids need 100% of our time mm -hmm. and any other responsibilities we might be carrying need 100% of our time. And it's been almost like overwhelming and an overload for us. And so... Um, Personally, my productivity has gone down, and that's been a, a big challenge for me. Mm. Yeah, I definitely. Uh, definitely. Uh, Go ahead, Shannon. I, I definitely agree with that. Um, but I would also say the quarantine aspect. You know, for me, my kids have been going to school mostly. They did do some, you know, hybrid learning, but mostly they've been going to school. So it's those unexpected periods that we're thrown into quarantine, that our whole worlds just get rocked. And that is, that's always something hard to adjust because you lose your entire support system because you're in quarantine. You can't get a break. You can't ask for help. There's only so much that people can do. People can drop off food, but that's really it. Like the rest and, and the work world goes on. You know, you still have projects, you still have tasks. Those don't end. You just have to figure out how to do it all. And in one two week period, while you're mentally worried that you might get COVID, you know, and what's that going to look like? So I would say that's been the biggest challenge for me. Mm -hmm. Shana, I see you shaking your head and yeah. your eyes <laughs> yes. talk about your experience. Sure. It was really a struggle. I switched careers a year and a half ago. So I was only six months into a totally new career. Um, and then the world shut down and I was at home with a three year old who I, I didn't have school work. I didn't have, you know, those things to kind of keep them busy. And I had a three-year-old pretty much on my leg trying to work from home. Um, it was a struggle, a real struggle. Um, but I honestly had it, I think, easy. I had a good husband who had already, you know, done the whole work from home thing and knew how to roll. Um, had a mother-in-law who was around and could help when we both had phone calls at the same time or, you know, what have you. Um, and technologically speaking, my agency was pretty ready for, for that. Mm -hmm. But again, it, it, it's like, uh, you know, Kim was saying it's a hundred percent has to go to everybody. And that, and it's, it, you feel like you kind of wake up, you're like, okay, a cup of coffee and then survival mode for 14 hours. And then you go to bed um, and hopefully they don't fight you going to bed. So mm -hmm. Um, yeah, definitely you feel like you're in survival mode and not getting the rest you need. I mean, self-care kind of goes out the window when you're in that mode too. Um, so that was definitely a struggle. Abby Hamilton, uh, a lot of people, a lot of working moms, let's say, didn't have the same support system that Shana had. You've been sort of tracking things during the pandemic and, and you know, seeing who really was uh, really hurt the most by the pandemic. What can you tell us as far as anecdotally or from what you've seen as far as working moms and working women and how the, they were impacted over the past year? Yeah, this has been, this is really a national crisis for yeah. us. And I think the stories that we've heard from Shannon, from Kimberly, from Shana, really could support the national data that we've seen, which is basically saying that women feel like they have a greater share of the household chores of childcare, of all of those things that 
are about keeping the family intact. And it is showed compared to the fathers, not to say that they're not doing their share, but you know, pre-pandemic, it was 41% of women that that said they had the greater share of that of that task. And then during the pandemic, it was 51%. So there's a jump there of that kind of reinforces what we're hearing right now. And I think one of the things that's been challenging too is the impact of uh, as women are, are having a hard time kind of juggling their own life, personal and professional responsibilities while doing this at home, you know, if you take that to scale and look at the impact of that in, in the overall economy, um, you know, the productivity, like you said, the loss of productivity. And also, um, if you think about every working, like a large percentage of, of mothers throughout America, like we have about 9.7 million working mothers with children under the age of six before before even COVID hit. And so that means there, you have about two kids per family. And so if you if you looked at the childcare impact of that, we lost about 4.5 million childcare slots mm -hmm. during the pandemic. And so people really didn't have anywhere to turn to but themselves and extended family members. So I, I feel for our moms, um, I know that it's been a challenge for, for a lot of them during the, the last uh, 12 months. Be interesting to see Abby down the road if they can actually put a dollar figure on lost productivity from working moms who have had like a, 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 a you know a, a large burden, especially when the kids were home and all that. That yeah. things they don't have done with their job. It'd be interesting to see if they could put a number on that. Yeah, I think there was a hold on. Let me go ahead and see. I think there was like an, an estimate of what it's like sixty four point five million dollars that yeah. was impacted the economy. Yes. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And I think I think Kim was good for about a million and a half of that, right, Kim? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, that's about sixty-four point yeah. five billion in lost wages uh, and economic like activity. With with feminism, we've done a really good job to say women can do anything, right? Like that's been our message for a very long time. But I think what society didn't do was take things off of our plate so we could achieve anything. And what the pandemic has really impacted us on it's shown us very clearly that if we want to do anything we actually have to do everything and that's not sustainable that's not the it's not what we can do long term and so it's pushed us into this situation where if we want to achieve our dreams and then you know fight big things mm. we have to do it all um and we're just not prepared to do it all and so I, one of the things that the pandemic's really shown me is those support mechanisms for moms are absolutely essential. And when they go away, hmm. everything falls apart. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And so that's, we've been in that situation. Like our, our child care has gone away. We haven't been able to rely on family members because we don't want to get them sick. And it just all falls apart. Mm -hmm. yeah. hmm. Karen Pillis uh, with Family Service of Roanoke Valley, talk about what you've seen counseling wise over the past year, uh, women coming for more help. And a lot of it's on Zoom now, but, but talk about, have you seen, the emotional toll that the pandemic has taken on a lot of working mothers and working women. So nationally, we're seeing that about 50% of women, of mothers, are saying that they have currently, are currently feeling anxiety and depression, yeah. whereas about 40% of dads are. So, right. So that is, we are seeing an increase in women who are experiencing those symptoms. That is not to be, we've heard today that we could expect that. Mm -hmm. I think that what hasn't really been talked about today is the invisible labor that women always carry on their shoulders of, oh, Sally needs new soccer cleats and Jamie needs to go to the orthodontist and you know, it, all those, the dates and the emotional, the, the checks we do on our kids, are they okay? Or, or, or how are they doing emotionally? That, that we can like parse out the childcare if we're lucky. Mm -hmm. We can give out bedtime, we can give, but it really is kind of still up to the moms to give it out. We're still kind of the keeper of those schedules. And that takes an additional toll on women's mental health. We're exhausted mm -hmm. because to Kimberly's point, we want to do everything, but we can't do it all alone. Mm -hmm. And we haven't learned how to let it go. Let some of that go. Like Sally's cleats will just have to be gotten another day. And, you know, I know I am, I have a, a college age child 
And I've seen it play out with my husband and I. He stayed home with her the last 10 years of her school. He worked from home and I worked from the office. So he's really in tune to doctor's appointments, even though she's 21, you know, you need to go to the allergist and you need to go to this. But through this pandemic, with her emotional, her depression, her anxiety, her, you know, will I ever be able to go back to school? Will I ever see my friends? Will I ever get a hug from my boyfriend again? All of that has fallen on me. And it's not just because I'm a counselor. It is because I'm a mom. And so I'm worried about my own mental health. I'm worried about my daughter's mental health and my other daughter's mental health. And I'm carrying all that from afar because my children are older. And that's a that's a heavy load. And that comes from a point of privilege where they have resources. If I if they did not have those resources, I, I can't imagine the toll it would take on me. Mm-hmm. So we as an agency are seeing mothers who, but as one would might expect from mothers, what we're doing is seeing mothers referring their children for services. Mm. So my child is depressed and anxious. My child is having social anxiety about going back to school. My child misses their friends. And so we're getting calls upon calls for play therapy and for therapies for younger children. Moms aren't reaching out yet for themselves because they are not taking, they don't have time to worry about themselves right yet. Mm. Mm-hmm. I, I wanted to uh, go back quickly to Abby, uh, but do, you've been tracking Alice families. Yeah. Uh, the surveys, uh, Alice families are asset limited, income constrained and employed. Are some of those where, where families are led by the, maybe it's a single mom or just yes. the mom's taking on more of the burden. Are they really getting hit especially hard, the Alice families? Yeah, absolutely. I think if you look at the percentage of, you know, jobs that Alice families fall into, they're essentially in the service sector. There is the essential workers. A lot of them are going to be in, in health care, personal care, um, office administration. Maybe they're teachers, child care workers. And so if you think about Alice families and uh, what jobs they were holding pre-pandemic and then women too, what types of industries and occupations where women are overrepresented, it's the same. There's a lot of overlap between that. And so the, I, I agree with what, what's been said here in terms of women are really carrying a huge burden on their shoulders. And the sector is seeing that because we are a large part of that sector. Mm-hmm. And you were saying uh, overrepresented, i.e. a uh, greater percentage of women do retail work, yes. service, and that type yes. of thing. So, so they, like they, for they instance, first lose their jobs. Yes. Yeah, so healthcare, 86% of, fem- of workers are female. If you look at nonprofit occupations, like over almost 70% of them are women. And so if you think about women that are in those labor forces that are really essentially on the front lines right now during the pandemic, they are pressured to do more, they're, pre- they're burnt out, they're exhausted. And then they, on top of that, they have the family pressures that they're all- And they're scared. Yes. They're scared of, and they're scared of getting COVID and yes. taking it home to their family, to their mothers that they're taking care of and their mm-hmm. grandmothers. And to Jean's point, they're also more likely to lose their jobs because they're frontline workers. Yes. I wanted to ask, a, I want to ask Shannon and Kim about some support groups you're involved with. But first, I have to ask the two of you, you both have kids that are in school. Uh, when your kids were home most of the time, did you ever feel guilty that they that you wish they were back in school? <laughs> Um, I didn't feel guilty for having that feeling because I knew why I was having it. Like I knew that that support mechanism was super important. Um, What I feel guilty about is, especially recently, they've been able to articulate to me, uh, mommy, why are you so tired? And that has like shattered my heart into a million pieces. And so trying to figure out, okay, well, I'm I'm not, I know I'm not balancing well. And so how can I balance it better to give them the time And it's hard for somebody to be in the same physical space as another person and not have access to them. And that's how they feel, right? I'm here in my home office, but I'm telling them to go away all the time. Um, So I've been trying to dedicate more time to them, um, which has left me incredibly behind on all the work. So it's just, it's like you never win, right? So yeah, there's been times that I've daydreamed about like full days of school when they are occupied for eight hours. (laughs) Talk about, uh, uh, you, you're involved with the Huddle Up Moms support group. Uh, talk about you, you're starting a, a working mothers sub support group, working mothers. Uh, talk about that and, and what do you think the common thread is with all these 
women that are, are in a, a working moms group? Sure, yeah. Um, so I am the director of education and support for Huddle Up Moms, which is a local nonprofit um, challenging and trying to overcome the isolation that motherhood brings, which has only been exaggerated by COVID, right? And our three major pillars for challenging that is educating, empowering, and connecting moms. Um, so under uh, my directorship, there's been two programs come out. One is called Mom Huddles, and we target specific um, types of motherhood. So like working moms, single moms, breastfeeding moms, you know, things like that. And then we also have a new program called Mom Mentorship. Um, so both of them are about connecting women and empowering them by not feeling isolated and by having other like-minded moms to talk to and say like, give me some perspective or share your insights or I want to set a goal for myself. Can you help me achieve this goal? Um, for working moms in our working moms huddle, the main thread has been exhaustion. Like we share over and over every week. Oh my God, we got through the week. Um, Shannon's actually a part of that group. And so we're, we're constantly sharing like funny memes about like, oh my gosh, it's Friday. How did we achieve this? Um, so it's just, everybody's so overwhelmed and so tired, which is what we've talked about here today. You know? And I should mention, Kim is also going, you're also, as we tape is going through the Advancement Foundation's gauntlet program for your your business elder care solution. So you're really tired. Um, <laughs> uh, Shannon, talk about some of the things you're involved with. Number one, you're with the Advancement Foundation, but also you're the co-founder of the Latinas Network. And this is, uh, I guess, a support group for Latina women that are starting businesses. Talk about that and, and talk about how maybe that type of support is probably more important now than ever. Absolutely. We definitely see people craving to get together physically in person. Um, I think that comes not from a lack of, um, you know, wanting to respect the guidelines, but a strong desire to help your own mental health is what I'm seeing is these women are just thirsty to get together. So we've, you know, we've got the guidelines to under 10 people. We all wear masks. We stay six feet apart and to hear and see what they have to say is just powerful. I mean, people as humans, we are made to have human contact. And when we don't, or we have very limited, isolating human contact, that affects us mentally. And so to be able to provide these, source, uh, these sorts of places where we can meet up, we can see each other in a safe environment has, I think, been essential to just realizing that we're not alone there's other women out there and we're all, you know, when we get together, we're sharing what's working for us because that's where we have to keep moving forward. What's working for you? What strategies are working? What mindset techniques, you know, what are you doing productively? Like for me, for example, um, you know, I feel very privileged in all of this because when this first started, I was working in a law firm and my world exploded. All of the HR, the IT, the finances, the marketing, all of the departments that I oversaw were just, you know, completely changing. And it required me to work a lot. And my kids you, were not. You actually told me, Shannon, you actually told me you, you changed your career in part due to the pandemic. I did. Yeah. So, you know, my world kind of exploded. And for those three months, I had a nanny living with me. So she kept my children and I left the house and went into work. And that was amazing. I cannot imagine trying to do what I had to do with children like that. I don't know what I would have done because just even with these ideal circumstances, I was still being burnt out and I could see and I could hear like Kim was saying that my children needed me. So I went and talked to the partners and I told them I cannot keep choosing my career over my children, especially in a time like this. And we had to make some changes and I ended up leaving that firm and found the Advancement Foundation, which gave me the flexibility that I needed to support my children who were now entering hybrid learning. I was losing my nanny. So now it was, you know, all coming back on me and I needed to find a way to make money to support my family but to also support my children mentally and emotionally because the world is changing and school is changing and kids are resilient, but they need us too. Mm -hmm. And so that has been, you know, having places like Latinas Network and Huddle Up Moms where we can get the connection that we need has been crucial to me surviving and being here today. Mm -hmm. 
I want to ask you real quickly about the Advancement Foundation and, and the Gauntlet program that, again, that Kim's going through. I'm wondering if you've seen it this year or do you, you might, you, you, maybe you'll see it next year for the Gauntlet, uh, which is like a shark tank in a way, but where, where maybe more women entrepreneurs are coming out and saying, hey, the heck with it. I want to control more of my own destiny and I'm going to start my own business and make it thrive. Are, are you even seeing that this year, Shannon? Yes, absolutely. And the one positive thing about going virtual is that we don't have, you know, these uh, participants don't have to drive to a location and drive home. So it does save a little bit of time. You do, you know, you can have dinner and then hop on to class and then get off and tuck your kids in if that's, you know, you're at home, which I think makes it a little easier. But we have seven over 70% of the entrepreneurs that are enrolled in the program are women. And I know there's a couple that are single moms or moms of multiple children who are looking to provide income to their family without having to be stretched so thin through a rigid nine to five job. So that is definitely, we're seeing that this year and I anticipate we'll continue to see it. Mm -hmm. I think that this pandemic has allowed for, for moms especially, to get more creative in income, um, that we can bring, we, we can run three businesses at once, and we can do three or four different things to provide the income, and then it provides that flexibility that we need to be able to do it all, like Kim said, um, you know, and it allows us to, to make your own schedule and those kinds of things. So I think a lot of women are seeing the value in that kind of work versus the nine to five go into an office like Shannon was doing at the law firm. Um, and, you know, one of the things that I learned too was automate the things you can automate. Mm -hmm. I, I invested in a robot vacuum. I was like, I spend 30 minutes a day vacuuming my house because I have two massive dogs. I'm not doing it anymore. I'm not taking the 30 minutes a day away from my three-year-old, away from my job. I'm going to automate what I can. Um, you know, that was huge. Such a small thing, but it gave you that time. Um, and the flexibility to get what you needed to get done, done. Speaking of flexibility, uh, Shana, you work for an insurance company, you're working from home. Are you, are you hoping that when this is all over, and this is for anybody, that uh, you know, if you work for a company and you typically go into an office, that they, they will remain flexible, that they could see that your productivity was, was still high, and that they'll let you work home, if not all the time, then a, then a, a good, good deal of the time. Are you hoping that that, that remains in place? Well, and that has remained in place. I did work from home for just a few months, and then I've been back and forth since. So I'm actually, I'm currently at my office today, but, you know, my son's got a dentist appointment next week. I'll be working from home that day. Um, and we have, uh, luckily, the technology set up to do that, um, and now the three-year-old's a little bit more used to it. So, um, so yes, absolutely. And I've been lucky to have a boss who who likes the work from home and likes the flexibility of it. And as long as productivity is still there, you know, and you're mm -hmm. still able to do your job, you know, it's been really great. So. We only have I a hope couple this minutes. is oh. like drawing oh, the curtain on what lives really look like. Right. I think we all mm -hmm. have to be really open and vulnerable about like, Oh my gosh, I'm carrying all of this. This is the reality. I'm typing you an email with my kid on my lap right now. And we, for so long, we had to hide that. Like we, you don't talk about mm -hmm. it. You don't say all the things that you have to do or that you need to leave work early so that you can bring someone to a ball game, you know? And now we've opened that up. And I hope that that makes long-term changes everywhere that we can say like, I hey, people we're have been understanding. Stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could not agree with that more. I know just a couple of weeks ago, I was doing a live and my kids came up from downstairs. I paid my oldest to keep them downstairs, but that didn't work. <laughs> And they came up during the live and we were interviewing an ice cream shop and they loved it. And that is something that I've really appreciated. Like I've been able to connect deeper with people. I've been able to see the inside of their homes, their children, their pets, their cat, like Kim's cat as he walks across the keyboard. And I think just, you know, we're all grasping for that connectivity. And those are little ways that I know I've grasped it and just appreciated it. I like looking at people's bookcases to see if we've been reading yeah. any of the same stuff. So we only got about a minute and a half left. Let me get a quick comment from Karen and then go to Abby. Uh, Karen, uh, are you hoping that when this is all over, that maybe maybe working moms and working women understand that they can get through this type of thing? And maybe if they don't feel so guilty about things or whatever, that they they'll be OK. I think with the I think that 
our society has been going in the direction of valuing self-care. And I think we've all given that a lot of lip service and, you know, I'll take a bath and light a candle. And I think that what this pandemic has shown us is that self-care needs to be deeper and it needs to be constant. And it, you can't just do it in a, you know, once a week bath with a candle. And I think that women especially are seeing the, how necessary that is. And I'm hoping that the strategies and the, and the coping mechanisms that we've all used to get through this will also allow us to continue them at post pandemic to increase those, those strategies but, and not have to count on the, the emergency services kind of, you know, at my, girls, my girl gang coming in and, and saving the day, which is really nice to have. I'm not ever going to dismiss the need for that. But on a regular basis, how we can balance, better balance home, work, children, motherhood, wifedom, you know, all those roles that we may we may um, mm-hmm. experience in our lives. So, yes, I do think that it has given us that opportunity. And real quick, Abby, about uh, 20 seconds or so, even some of the things that United Way does in the future, do you see where they can learn from this about maybe how to target resources towards helping working moms? Definitely. I think we've highlighted childcare and, and after school care as really a primary concern for a lot of our working families. And then number two, making sure that we continue to advocate for workplace policies that are friendly for families. You know, making sure that we have flexible schedules, making sure that we have uh, paid parental leave, you know, those kinds of things that have always been on the pipeline that we can need to continue to push uh, to make sure that working families become a sustainable part of our workforce. Okay, we're going to have to leave it there. This is Business Matters. And thank you, ladies, for joining us. Thank you so much. If you have any questions or show suggestions, email us at businessmatters at blueridgepbs.org. And if you missed any of our previous episodes, you can watch them on our website at blueridgepbs.org.